Let's go ahead and uh, reset our interface here. I'm going to do Command-0 just to get the default workspace listed, which you can do the same. And it looks pretty good, but I'm going to uh, hide the browser at the top left just because we're going to use the inspector a lot in these next couple videos. A lot of people like to add effects and start manipulating clips using Final Cut Pro. And there's many tools included to help you create those effects. In this video, we're going to look at how to use the transform, crop, and distort tools that are included with Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm going to select this clip here with Simon, just as an example clip that we're going to use. And in the viewer, at the lower left corner of the viewer, you're going to see the transform tool listed. You can click and hold this little arrow next to a little drop down menu. And you'll see that the transform tool also has a crop and distort option. So you can do all this using this little tool here, but I'm going to click on the transform tool and use this one first. What you'll notice is in the viewer, we actually get this outline around the clip. There's a little uh, icon here, a little overlay that we can use. We then see a reset and a done button at the top right. And at the top left, there's some keyframe buttons that we'll use as well. So how do you use this transform tool? Well, you can do it right here in the viewer. You can just click and drag on the clip, for example. And an example of transforming a, a clip is transforming the position, moving the clip where it's showing up in the viewer. Now, if I were to play back our project, you from people. Yeah. and you, you can't, can't keep it forever. forever, you can see that clip is actually moved off to the left side of the screen. We were cropping it. We don't have everything. We can't see the whole thing. And there's a ton of black space here. So um, that's one way you can manipulate a clip using the transform tools is dragging it around. Uh, your viewer. Now when I use the transform tool, I usually shrink down my view here. So it's set to 90% right now. I'm going to take this down to 50%. And the reason I'm going to do that is it makes it a lot easier to move something off of the screen. The view is still set to this black area. But now if I wanted to, I could animate this coming maybe across the clip or in a different way. So that's another tip is just shrink down your viewer so that you can see everything around. Transform tool also enables these little blue dots around the clip. If you change one of the corners and drag it up or down, you can change the size of this clip. You can even go down and invert the clip so that it's upside down, depending on where you're dragging it. If you actually want to manipulate the clip and its aspect ratio to, to squish or stretch a clip, you can definitely do that too using any of the other circles there, the little adjustments that you can make. And then in the middle of the clip, we've seen you can move it around, but there's this other little circle that lets you rotate the clip. So you may want to place these, maybe you have a montage happening, you want multiple clips to show up, you can definitely do that in your, uh, in your view here using the transform tool. All of these transforms that we're making, if you go into the video inspector, you can see them under the transform section. So watch the position, rotation, scale, Watch all those numbers as I make adjustments here in the viewer. We can see those numbers changing over there in the inspector. So if you don't want to do this visually using the transform tool, you can also use the inspector as a way to adjust any of these parameters. And there's a couple ways to adjust them. You can certainly use the sliders that are listed. You can double click on any of these numbers and manually enter in a number. So maybe I want it back to 100%. I'll just type in 100 and then hit the return key. And that sets the scale all parameter up to 100. Or you can click and drag these numbers up or down, which is very helpful. For example, this scale all, if I drag it all the way up, it goes up to 400%. But maybe I want to zoom in even closer to Simon's eye here. I can actually click and drag the zoom even higher. So if the sliders don't let you get to a specific number where 400 is not enough, don't hesitate. You can click and drag this number even higher or even uh, double click and just type in. So maybe I want to go to 2000%, type in 2000, hit return. And now we've gone up 2000% to Simon's eye, which is going to be blurry because we're zooming way in close. So this 1080 resolution is no longer uh, clear, so just be aware of that as you're making these transformations. But that's one way to transform a clip using the actual transform tool or manipulating these numbers. 
you can reset any of these parameters using this little arrow that's on the right, kind of like a U-turn arrow or resetting it or taking it back. If you hit it next to a specific parameter, say scale all, it resets the scale all parameter, but it didn't change the rotation or the position. So if I want to, I can reset the position, which recenters it, I can reset the rotation, or if you've manipulated all these numbers, you can go up next to transform and reset all of these at once using that arrow on the right side. Cool, so that's the transform tool. In addition to that, we have the crop tool, which you can see here is also in the inspector. And the way that the crop tool works, if you drag the edges, instead of it squishing the clip, we're actually just cropping in on the area that we go in close to. So we can crop in just on Simon's face here, and I could hit done, and there we have just a crop of that area of the clip. If you don't see any of the parameters for crop, just go over and click on the show button here, and you'll see all of those uh, listed. There's a couple different ways you can crop in on a picture. So this is a trim, where we've actually trimmed, think of getting like a haircut, you're trimming your hair, you're actually getting rid of parts of it. But you can change this and do just a standard crop, which when you do a, a crop, it actually goes into the specific area and expands it out. And you can see those options here at the bottom of the viewer as well. So if you wanted to, you could crop and instead of it trimming where it's going to keep his face the same size, a crop actually expands out to fill the entire viewer. So that's another type of cropping. So instead of trim, which is more, most common, you can do a crop. And then the final tool that's listed uh, as a crop option is Ken Burns, which the Ken Burns effect is a way for you to zoom into an area. If you don't know, Ken Burns is a pretty famous documentary uh, filmmaker and editor, and he made a lot of documentaries on older subjects where there wasn't a lot of film and video available. He had a lot of still images, though. So in order to make those still images a little bit more exciting, he would zoom in and zoom out to create some motion. So we have a video here, but we can still do the Ken Burns effect where we're going to zoom in. So uh, the green area, you can see this outline around the whole thing is where it's going to start. And then the Ken Burns effect is going to end in this box. So we're actually zooming in close on this area. The top left, I do have a preview button. I'm just going to hit that so you can see this. Notice how over the length of that clip, we're zooming in to Simon's face there. And no. 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 let the space bar to stop the preview. If I wanted to, I could also hit this button and reverse those. Then we'll start in close on Simon's face and zoom out. I'm going to mute this. And you can't there we start in close, no. and then we zoom out to the full frame. And you can't keep him forever. No. So Ken Burns effects is a nice way to very quickly add some no. animation to a and you can't picture there. No. Again, hit the space bar to pause that animation. I'm going to hit the done button here to finish that effect and put that in there. And what distort lets you do is just that. You can click and drag in any of the points that are around the clip and actually distort the image. So we're actually stretching it or rotating it in a way that uh, is actually manipulating the placement of those clips. This can be very helpful. If you have some video that you want to place onto a TV screen, you can actually go and put these points into all the corners of that TV screen. And by manipulating or distorting that image, it may look like it was actually placed onto that screen. Or maybe you have a computer monitor sitting on a de desk, you can use this distort tool um, to do that. In the inspector, I can hit show to see those various parameters that I've adjusted, but I can also just hit the return button here to reset that parameter. Now with any of these, it's very common that you're going to want to actually animate these various parameters. You might want to scale or rotate an image as it's playing back. And that's something you're going to do with keyframes, which we'll look at in the next video.